and uh, it was the rescue mission that gripped the world. Three years ago, 12 schoolboys and their football coach became trapped inside a cave in northern Thailand. Yeah, um, the whole world was watching this, uh, but it was the heroic actions of our next guests, John Valanthan and Rick Stanton, that sparked global interest and ultimately ensured that those 13 lives were saved. Now, it's amazing that Incredible. we can look back on that because no one expected anybody um, to survive. And I think it was fair to say that uh, hope was, was practically given up mm. on rescuing these boys. Now, John and Rick, who we're about to speak to, they've both brought out books on this. Um, now they're talking about uh, the whole story. Not only that, there is a film in the pipeline, which we're going to talk about very shortly. But first of all, John and Rick, true heroes. Pleasure to meet you both. You didn't have to go there. You were on this side of the world. The call came. Why you two? And did it take you a long time to make up your mind? I think we, we both felt that we were best placed to certainly add expertise and try and give the boys the, the best possible chance of survival. The British cave diving conditions have prepared us or had prepared us for what we were expecting to face. And, and that might have seemed arrogant at the mm. time, but I think our thoughts along those sorts of lines were proven right. But Rick, the immediate thing I get, looking at you and John, is that you're tall men. I would have imagined to do and be successful and to wriggle about in these uh, underground caves the way you're expected to, you guys would have to be about half the size. Well, we're tall, but we're relatively thin, hopefully. And uh, these weren't particularly small caves. In, it was in places, but uh, it's really just a, 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 like being accustomed to moving through a cave. That, that really held us in good stead and also used to fast-flowing water and zero visibility. I mean, you, you have worked together for, for some years, haven't you? Um, on your way there, how, what did you discuss? What were you expecting and what was the reality when you got there? Certainly, when we arrived on site, what, what we found was, was quite chaotic and also the weather was really against us and, more importantly, against the boys. And I think it's fair to say in the earlier days of the rescue, we certainly didn't think there was much chance of finding anyone alive, let alone getting them out safely. So when you were swimming through, crawling through the caves, what did you see first that gave you hope that they were alive? Well, we, um, the further we got in, having not found any sign of them, that it was more likely that we would come across something. And we really didn't know what we would come across. We were expecting the worst, as, as John had said. But we were floating in the water and I was smelling and, and you could smell, suddenly smelt them, saw their light, heard voices, but it, we still didn't know what we were going to encounter. We didn't know if some were dead, some were alive. It, it could have been a horrific situation. So when that iconic video was taken mm. by John and they all just walked down the slope Mm. and sat down in front of us, that, that was an incredible moment. A wonderful, moment. wonderful moment, John. You know, wonderful moment to find that they were still alive, but then you have this awful pressure. How do we get them out? And you had to make some very difficult decisions. We, we did. At, at the time when, when we were there, I, I made a promise that Rick thought was bold, which was that I, I said I would come back. And it, it's a slightly odd situation that's kind of unique within caving, really, where you can have... 12 or 13 happy and smiley children that are, to all intent and purposes, safe, and yet they're separated from the outside world mm -hmm. and they have to go through this incredibly dangerous journey to come out. Yeah, and uh, to prove how incredibly dangerous it was, one man, one diver actually lost his life uh, with this. What, what was he doing when he died? Well, he, he was taking in supplies, not to the boys, but just setting up for the rescue, um, and he was a retired SEAL. I think, I think the, the, the Thai Navy made a, a massive contribution to, to the rescue. And it was a great shame that Sam Angunan, his, his name was, lost yeah. his life. Very but that, that contribution, I think, was, was mm. very important and significant. Um, let's go back to the, the rescue, Rick. So the boys were alive, but you had to make a decision. How do we get young children out of here without them panicking? So what did you do? I, I think that also refers to any person, not just young children, any adult, I think... You know, they'd been led, the journey out was two and a half hours, you couldn't see anything, you were being bumped and scraped and pushed and poked into holes and, and it scraped along the ground. 
I think anyone would have had a hard time to hold, and hold one their of you, sorry to interrupt, but one, one of you in front of a, no, a child no, and one behind just one them. on one. So just one. there were four UK divers transporting the boys and it was one diver, one boy, and you had the responsibility for that boy's life from when you took them uh, a kilometre and a half swim mm -hmm. until you gave them to the... Two and a half authority. hours, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours it took. That and you absolutely... were cradling them and holding them yeah. and swimming them. Do you know what? If it was a film, you wouldn't believe it, but it is going to be a film, yeah? What, what, what are the plans? So the, the, the film is, or there is a film, a, a, a movie, which is being directed by Ron Howard, and it is a dramatisation, but they, they have been very close to uh, the detail as much as they possibly can. I think it, it's quite interesting, you're talking about having two people uh, in the... It, looking after a child, it's hard to explain how, in literally zero visibility water, the communication suddenly becomes very difficult. Mm. And I think that's one of the, the, the things that they've, they've tried to replicate in the film, which is to give us certainly a sense of what it's like to be underwater, yeah. a, a, a sense of that difficulty and isolation, both for the boys and, and for the divers. Can I ask who's, who's playing you in the film? So I've got Vigo Mortensen playing me. And have you worked with him? Uh, so I've, I was... Uh, communicating with him for many months before filming started, uh, just so he could get my uh, mannerisms and the way I talk. Uh, and obviously he's a very skilled actor and if you see him sort of assimilate your character until he becomes a better me than I am. Gosh, gosh. <laughs> and, what, and what about you, John, who's playing you? Colin Farrell is playing me. Wow. Which is, Did which you is... insist on that? <laughs> <laughs> I asked for Mr Bean, but I, I, <laughs> I was told by Ron Howard in no uncertain terms that he wasn't making that sort of movie. And how much did you work with Colin? I've spent a fair bit of time with him on Zoom uh, and talking to him. And I've been quite impressed by his, his diligence. So over the time that he was filming, he's been training to run. I, I do a lot of running. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, at the end of the filming, he ran the Brisbane Marathon in, in a very respectable time, which I think is quite diligent. Gosh for uh, a method actor. And one, one last question. Um, how did it feel for you both, I'll ask you one at a time, to hand over a child? Because you've obviously done some rescues before where the outcome wasn't positive. Um, how did it feel for you bringing out one of those boys and handing that child to their parents? The, the responsibility underwater w was immense. Whenever you're cradling a child underwater, occasionally, the, the bubbles from his diving regulator would rise past your face and, and you knew he was alive. And, and for me, to have finished the rescue and ha handed over all of the children and the coach safely, I was just relieved that we didn't have to meet the parents and mm. say, I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. Of course, there, there was no precedent for this. No one had ever been sedated underwater before in any circumstances. Uh, and we didn't promise 100 percent success we hadn't envisaged that so uh, even you know there was no time for complacency even on until the last child was out that it was only then we could relax it, uh, it, it is extraordinary how you ever relax again after that i don't know i presume you're now just waiting for the next call for the next rescue are you it, it's happened before uh, it, it will almost certainly happen again but i think the thing that is common to all of the rescues and incidents we've both been involved in is that everyone is different mm. and you never quite know what will come next. And, it, well. and it's yeah. never when you want or where you want. Yeah. It's yeah. always inconvenient in, in some way or shape in your life, but well, we would always go. Three years ago now, and um, Rick's book, uh, there is Aquanaut, A Life Beneath the Surf, mm. uh, is that one. And uh, then John's book is 13 Lessons That Saved 13 Lives in the Thai Cave Rescue. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Heroes. Heroes. Absolutely. Thank you.